Before heroin enters the system, inhibitory neurotransmitters are active in the synapse. These neurotransmitters inhibit dopamine from being released. When the body's natural opiates activate opiate receptors, the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters is shut down. Without inhibition, dopamine can be released. Heroin mimics natural opiates and binds to opiate receptors, turning off dopamine inhibition. Dopamine is allowed to flood the synapse, producing immediate feelings of sedation and well-being. Neurons with opiate receptors are in parts of the brain responsible for the transmission of pain signals, stress response, and emotional attachment. Our body's opiates are natural painkillers, effective when we have sustained massive injury. This is why morphine, a drug related to heroin, is used as a painkiller. Serotonin transporters are responsible for removing serotonin molecules from the synaptic cleft after they have done their job. Ecstasy mimics serotonin and is taken up by serotonin transporters. In fact, ecstasy is more readily taken up than serotonin itself. This interaction with ecstasy alters the transporter. The transporter becomes temporarily confused and starts to do its job in reverse. The transporter starts transporting serotonin out of the cell. The excess serotonin becomes trapped in the synaptic cleft. As a result, it binds again and again to the receptors, overstimulating the cell. Ecstasy affects serotonin pathways responsible for mood, sleep, perception, and appetite. Ecstasy also indirectly interacts with the reward pathway. The excess serotonin stimulates a milder release of dopamine along the reward pathway, giving ecstasy slightly addictive properties. Before marijuana enters the system, inhibitory neurotransmitters are active in the synapse. These neurotransmitters inhibit dopamine from being released. When activated by the body's own native cannabinoid, called anandamide, cannabinoid receptors turn off the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters. Without inhibition, dopamine can be released. THC, the active chemical in marijuana, mimics anandamide and binds to cannabinoid receptors. Inhibition is turned off and dopamine is allowed to squirt into the synapse. Anandamide is known to be involved in removing unnecessary short-term memories. It is also responsible for slowing down movement, making us feel relaxed and calm. Unlike THC, anandamide breaks down very quickly in the body. That explains why anandamide doesn't produce a perpetual natural high.
Dopamine transporters are responsible for removing dopamine from the synaptic cleft. Because meth mimics dopamine, it is taken into the cell by the dopamine transporters. Once inside the cell, meth enters the dopamine vesicles, forcing the dopamine molecules out. The excess dopamine in the cell causes the transporters to start working in reverse, actively pumping dopamine out of the cell and into the synapse. The excess dopamine becomes trapped in the synaptic cleft. As a result, it binds again and again to the receptors, overstimulating the cell. Meth is highly addictive because it works directly on the brain's reward pathway, making the user feel intense pleasure and exhilaration. Inhibitory neurotransmitters, called GABA, are active throughout the brain. These neurotransmitters act to control neural activity along many brain pathways. When GABA binds to its receptor, the cell is less likely to fire. Meanwhile, in another area of the brain, another neurotransmitter called glutamate acts as the brain's general-purpose excitatory neurotransmitter. When alcohol enters the brain, it delivers a double sedative punch. First, it interacts with GABA receptors to make them even more inhibitory. Second, it binds to glutamate receptors, preventing the glutamate from exciting the cell. Alcohol particularly affects areas of the brain involved in memory formation, decision-making, and impulse control. Dopamine transporters are responsible for removing dopamine molecules from the synaptic cleft after they have done their job. Cocaine blocks these transporters, leaving dopamine trapped in the synaptic cleft. As a result, dopamine binds again and again to the receptors, overstimulating the cell. Like other drugs, cocaine concentrates in the reward pathway. However, it is also active in the part of the brain controlling voluntary movements. This is why cocaine abusers are fidgety and unable to be still. LSD acts almost exclusively on serotonin neurons. LSD chemically resembles serotonin and elicits its effect by binding to serotonin receptors. There are several types of serotonin receptors in the brain. Each is responsible for performing specific functions. LSD interacts with particular receptors, but not always in the same way. Sometimes LSD may inhibit them, and sometimes it may excite them. This is one reason why LSD has complex sensory effects. LSD and other hallucinogens excite a particular region of the brain known as the locus ceruleus, or LC. A single neuron from the LC may branch into many different sensory areas of the brain. The LC is responsible for feelings of wakefulness and evoking a startle response to unexpected stimulus.